Okay, my last video, I announced my contest. I gave you all the rules and I canceled two, the Facebook and Twitter thing because duh, uh, not everybody has a Facebook and Twitter page. So there you go. Um, I wanted to give you an example of a entry. Um, I'll explain it to you. Guy shot it on an iPhone, uh, did the music on an iPad. No, he did it in uh, GarageBand on his uh, iPhone. Um, yeah, pretty much it. He did edit it, and I think he did something in After Effects, but he threw it together, and he sent it to me, and it made me laugh. Let me show it to you real quick, and then we'll get on with a real episode. Today's episode of The Acidic Filmmaker is brought to you by snakes. <laughs> Ever wonder how you can make a movie? Yeah! Truth is, you can't without a red epic. What? That's right. Anything else won't get any views on the tube. That's why I shoot all of my footage on a red epic. Plus, I've got money. It's not a contest channel. Let's do an episode. This episode of The Basic Filmmaker is brought to you by... Not a sound guy. Not a sound guy. Okay, I give up. I've had so many requests to show what I do with my sound in post and audition. I'm just gonna do it. Now, let me make something clear. Two things, actually. One, I'm not a sound guy. Not a sound guy. Not a sound guy. Not a sound guy. I am not a sound guy. I'm not a sound guy. I hope I made that perfectly clear. Secondly, I've gone out and sought opinions, seeked opinions, sought opinions on how to make my sound the best that I can in this setup. The problem with that is I've gotten so many opinions that you can't decide on which. So I just decided to go out and do it to what I thought sound good based on my ears. Let me show you what I do. Now, caveat, this is my sound settings in Audition in this room Using that mic, I'm not a sound guy, and my ears. You may have a different opinion, and if you do, go ahead and leave it in a comment below. This is the way I do my settings. If you take these settings that I show you on Audition, <coughs> and you are in a different room using a different mic, using a different setup, using different ears, and you just blatantly go take those settings, it's not gonna sound good, or maybe you'll be lucky and it will. You spend a lot of time with cameras and, and filming and studying that and how to get the right shot and everything else, and then you slap some sound on. Well, sound is of equal or greater importance. You need to spend the time to study it and make it better all the time. If your filmmaking skills are even halfway up the par of shooting something decent, then leave it alone and work on your sound. Work on your sound and your sound and your sound and your sound and your sound. And, your sound. and of course, in the meantime, work on your film uh, skills. But work on your sound because that is the most important thing. That's the thing that happens is people hear bad sound and they go, eh. So let's take it over to the editing booth. I'll show you what I do. So here we are in Audition. You can see this is actually my voice that I'm uh, affecting. And uh, I do use a Rode NTG3 mic about five, six, 10 inches away uh, at a 45 degree above me up here. And here's the raw sound. Uh, the raw sound sounds, well, it, this is what it sounds like when I get it in. I think it's great. It sounds okay, but I want it to be fuller and I want it to sound better. I think it's more interesting. Here's the first thing I do. I add a parametric EQ in my rack. Let's take a look at the settings here. Now you're probably wondering why these settings, well, I went off and went on the internets and looked around and said, I uh, uh, found some guy who had all these settings and he seemed smart and this is what he suggested. And I thought, okay, well, I'll just set all these to that and see how it sounds. So this is what the sound sounds like with it off. Well, let's turn this on here. Now this is what the sound sounds like with it on. I think it sounds better. I'm not gonna determine 
that is the only thing because I haven't added in the other effects. And like effects in a video, a, the whole rack is what you want to listen to when you're done, not just one. So here's the next one. I was messing around one time, uh, thinking I needed to compress the sound a little bit. I came across this multi-band compressor, opened it up, I flipped through all these different things up here, and I saw this thing called broadcast. And I thought, ah, okay, well maybe broadcast. So I picked the broadcast and here's what's happened. I got this gigantic, full, awesome, crazy sound that I personally like. I think it makes my voice sound better and I wish my voice was naturally like this. Over here, I pull the level down to minus three. When it's at zero, it's just a little bit too much. So for me, again, in my room, using my mic and using my situation, I pull it down to minus three. Uh, yours may vary. Now here's the next effect. There are limiters and there are all sorts of things that you can do to your sound. I tend to speak loudly and softly, like I'll have a, a large peak and a soft peak and I like to have those leveled out. So what I do, good or bad, is I use a hard limiter. And what that does is it takes all the peaks and it pulls them down and it tries to take some of the lower ones and pull them up a little bit. It's pretty smart. It doesn't just rack everything all over the place. It's not gonna take zero noise and rack it up to minus three dB. So I set this to minus three dB. Uh, I have found that's where it sounds good to me. And uh, let's take a look. Now we're sitting here with the uh, sound, the hard limiter on minus three dB. Um, Again, it just levels things out and it makes the low points higher and it makes the high points not so spiky. Now here's the last thing I do is I add adaptive noise reduction. I've tried noise reduction before and all these funny things and um, it just warbles and waffles and like that with the sound. So I use an adaptive noise reduction and I put it on light. It works really well. I don't have a lot of noise. I don't sit here with air conditioners running and refrigerators running and I'm not sitting next to a garage and there aren't planes flying by 10 feet over my house, which would be bad because it would take the top of my house off. It tends to very lightly remove some of the noise. Um, I hear sometimes a tiny bit of warbling in it, but not too much. I, I think it's sufficient. So let's go through each of these. This is the sound right now the raw sound with nothing off. This is what it sounds like when I add the parametric equalizer. Here's what it sounds like when I add the multi-band compressor. Here's what it sounds like when I add my hard limiter to minus three dB. Here's what it sounds like when I add my adaptive noise reduction just to pull out any of the little bits of things that would tend to make this washy. There's not much with the mic and setup I'm using. And here's the whole thing all together, and this is what it sounds like. Here's the original with nothing added to it, no post-processing. And here's the later one with all these racks affected. Now I apply this to the entire thing that I've talked about, and uh, I use what's called 90% wet. That says I don't want you to apply all these effects fully, I want to apply them 90% of that. Um, I, for me, it's just, that's what sounded good for me. I didn't like 50, I didn't like 100, I didn't like 80, and 90 seemed about be about right. So I apply it all, the little thing spins along, it does its thing, and then I end up with this kind of sound. I think it sounds better. If, I, if it's too loud or I feel like I need to reduce the sound, then uh, when I bring it into my editor, Premiere Pro, uh, then I knock the sound down. Sounds like a lot of work, but it's not. Uh, part of the reason I don't mess around with this too much is because I, I need to do this fast and I need time. And I don't have a lot of time. So let me show you the process of how I do this really quickly. All right, I copy my video, I copy my sound file. I actually create a new folder called Saved Sound, and I put a copy of the sound that I'm editing, just in case, 
uh, into the save sound file. Now I go back to the original folder where I keep my footage. I open this sound file in Audition. I pick my rack. I apply it to the entire file. I save it. I listen to it maybe a little bit and then I'm done. Now I go over to Premiere Pro. I bring in my footage. Now I bring in my sound file. I grab my footage and put it on the timeline. I grab my sound file. I put it on the timeline. I zoom it up uh, until I match the spikes. And the other thing you can do is you can also use uh, the thing in Premiere Pro that will sync your sound. That does a good job most of the time. Uh, sometimes it does weird things to me. Uh, I remove the old sound, delete it. I move this up here and link them back up and I'm done. And there you go. That's what I do with my sound. Well, that's it. I don't know how many times I can disclaim this. Not a sound guy. That's what I use in this room using that mic. Uh, I hope that helps and thanks for watching. Until then, thanks for watching, and I hope this hope.